If you're nervous about cooking fish, salmon is a great fish to learn on because it's so forgiving. Salmon is good when it's cooked perfectly medium, it's good when it's undercooked because, after all, it's good when it's totally raw, and thanks to salmon's high fat content, it's still pretty good when you overcook it. It's very hard to ruin this fish. I'm going to give you a few basic ways of cooking it, but first let's go shopping. We'll be restricting ourselves to fillets, and the first question is farmed versus wild. Here's farmed, here's wild, and you can tell by the color. Farmed salmon has a pale, orangey color that always reminds me of a creamsicle. Wild salmon has a more intense color. This is sockeye salmon, which of all the five major wild salmon species has the most reddish color. It's like the inside of a blood orange. Farmed salmon flesh would be gray if farmers didn't feed them the pigment astaxanthin, which gets the color closer to the real thing. Wild salmon get astaxanthin naturally from the crustaceans they eat, and they get way more of it. The farmers skimp on it because it's expensive as a feed additive. The other giveaway that this is farmed is the white ribbons running through the meat. That's the fat, and farmed salmon usually has a higher fat content, which you can see. That's a good or a bad thing, depending on what you want, but one way in which wild salmon is inarguably superior is in the type of fat. Both of these fish have a mixture of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. If you eat a pretty standard Western diet like me, that means you should probably be eating more omega-3s and less omega-6s. And that's exactly what the wild salmon gives you. Farmed Farmed salmon has much more omega-6 proportionally, which probably makes it less healthy for most people watching this. We're going to go with wild today, and unless you live near the fishery in, say, Alaska, your salmon is going to be frozen. It came to your grocery store frozen, they thawed it and put it in the fish case. Salmon harvest comes in all at once at one time of year, so it has to be frozen, that is just fine. Modern flash freezing is astoundingly good at preserving quality. According to my own little classification system, the fillets come in three basic shapes depending on where they were cut from on the whole side of fish. Here's what I call the car shape. See, it's like a little hatchback. Beep, beep! Those are usually my favorite. Then you'll get some thinner, more even pieces like these. I call those flat pieces, and then there's the tail piece, which you can spot by its taper. Both of those pieces have their virtues too, as you'll see. Fillets have been cut off the bone. That's what makes them fillets, but salmon fillets will still usually come with a few little pin bones that you need to take out. You'll see them poking up, and you can just yank them out with your fingers. The fillets naturally have a million pin bones, bones in them. The processors take them out, but they usually miss a few, understandably. Then there's the matter of the skin. The scales have been removed, so a lot of people eat the skin. I'm not a huge fan, but unless I needed skinless chunks for like a fish pie or something, I would not try to cut the skin off at this stage. It's vastly easier to remove the skin after the fish is cooked, and let's cook. I'm going to start with a stainless steel pan. Not my favorite choice, you'll see why. Medium heat, a little salt and pepper, and I love garlic powder. I love it generally, but I especially love it on sand it goes perfectly, and while it would burn at the temperatures at which you'd sear beef or pork, it kind of browns and goes toasty at the precise temperature at which I like to brown salmon anyway. So big fan of garlic powder here. Little olive oil in the pan, and you can see it shimmering there, but it's not smoking much. That temperature is perfect. I like to cook my salmon most of the way on the flesh side. A lot of people do the opposite. They want to crisp the skin. I usually don't eat the skin, so I don't care. And salmon flesh gets such a delicious crust on it if you let it brown, slowly but thoroughly. Here's another reason salmon is easy. It's got a window. You just look at the side, that cut cross section. I like to flip the fish when I can see from the color change that it's cooked halfway through at most. But since I'm using a steel pan, I've got to worry about sticking. I don't want to flip this until the crust is set enough that it won't stick and break when it's time to flip. And by the time I had the courage to do so, yeah, it was a hair burned. And even then, it's still stuck and got a little bit beat up. I'm not a fan of sticky pans for fish fillets. Now, I would normally just give this another a minute or two on the skin. I want to pull it when that window on the side still looks a hair raw at the very center, but this I'm going to deliberately overcook. I'm waiting until that cross section has fully changed color, and oops, the skin stuck. That's what I mean when I say the skin comes off way more easily after it's cooked. Some people love to eat that, by the way. It's worth a shot, even if you're skeptical. Okay, now this is what overcooked salmon looks like inside. See how it kind of crumbles? But here's the thing, that's still pretty good. You can get away with overcooking salmon a bit because the fat melts and compensates for the water loss. That fish is still moist. Let's try again though, and this time we'll use a Teflon pan. This is certainly the easiest option if you're not feeling confident. Heat it to medium, a little 
little olive oil. This time I'm using the tail piece. The tail pieces and the flat pieces are good because they're of pretty even thickness, which means they'll cook evenly if you're into that. I can tell that my heat is a little too low there. It's not sizzling. I think you want a mild sizzle with salmon at all times. I'm looking in my fish window again, and when I can see that the heat has moved almost halfway up, I will flip. And look how easy that was with a nonstick pan. Fish and eggs, that's what these things are great for. You can also see into the interior of the fish in those little fissures on top, visibly raw on the inside. But this time I'm going to deliberately undercook it. Out it comes. Let it rest a sec in here. You can see it flaking instead of crumbling. It's warm, but basically raw at the center. My wife would call that undercooked. I'd actually call it perfect. That is delicious to me. If there was bacteria on this thing, it would be on the surface, which we cooked and therefore sterilized. The major pathogen concern on the interior of salmon is parasites, which are killed by the freezing process, so I'm good with this. But this time, let's try to nail it, and I'll use my well-seasoned cast iron pan this time. This is an option if you don't want to use Teflon. Olive oil is shimmering, but not yet smoking. That's perfect. And this time, I'm cooking the car piece, which is my favorite. Why is it my favorite? Because it's of uneven thickness. I like rare salmon. I like well-done salmon. It's all good, and this gets me a sampler of all of those tastes in one portion. Plus, the thinnest part there, that's from the belly, which has proportional more fat, so it actually does well to be overcooked. It kind of fries from the inside. It's like this fish was evolved to be cooked. You can see this still kind of stuck on me. I'm not super confident with cast iron. Maybe you can do it better. And then right after flipping, something you can do is drop in some butter for basting. I also like to squeeze in some lemon juice at this point. It'll cook a bit, which will mellow it slightly. Between that and the butter, you end up getting something that tastes like a beurre blanc sauce, and it took almost no work. A little basting with a spoon, and when the salmon window on the side there still looks a little raw in the center, I'll pull it out. A little steamed broccoli on the side, and that's all I need for dinner. This is a very frequent weeknight meal in our house. Quick, easy, and good for you. You can see the salmon is still kind of smooth and moist in the center there. I would call this medium-rare salmon. I like it more rare, but if I was cooking for other people, this is what I'd guess most people want. Okay, salmon also does great under the broiler, what Brits call a grill. Unless it's a hugely thick filet, I think you want your broiler all the way hot. I'm just going to put oil in a cold oven-safe pan, grab one of my flat pieces, smoosh it around and get it coated in oil, a little bit of pepper, but no salt. You'll see why in a sec. Right underneath the hot broiler. You could totally just do this with salt and pepper, but I'm going to summon the upside-down bear and make a quick glaze of honey and soy sauce. The soy sauce is salty. Give it an initial brushing and then back under. Excess honey is going to run off and burn. That's why we don't put this on at first. Give it a second brushing, and after five minutes total, I can see little spaces starting to open up between the flakes of meat. That means this is cooked. No point in flipping when you're doing it under the broiler. That is super easy and tasty. And lastly, I will give you a recipe that I'm pretty sure I was drunk when I came up with. I'm not proud of it, but it's good in that it's a great way of using leftover mashed potatoes. You want to heat them up in the microwave so that they'll be soft and spreadable. It's nice if you have some fresh herb to mix in there. I'm using dill, a classic flavor with salmon. Just tearing a bunch of that in there. This mash already has butter and milk and salt and pepper in it. Pretty standard mashed potato. And then, like I said, I'm not proud of this dish, a big handful of shredded cheese. Whatever kind you got. You could use Parmesan. It obviously tastes good, but it also helps to bind this all together into a solid crust for the fish. A little oil in an oven-safe pan. I'm not greasing the flesh side because I want it to be sticky, not slippery. You should season it with some salt. I honestly forgot to do that when I shot this. It needs its own salt, not just the salt from the mash. And I'm just pressing a thin layer of cheesy mash over that salmon. I'm leaving myself an exposed chunk so that I can watch it for doneness under my all-the-way hot broiler. A flat piece of salmon is better for this. If it was a car piece, the shorter end would be farther from the broiler and wouldn't get enough color. When the crust is brown, and again, I can see the flakes of the salmon just starting to open up from each other, out this comes. This totally looks like something you'd get at a fast, casual family chain restaurant, but it's honestly kind of great. I mean no disrespect to this beautiful fish, provided to me by the sponsor of this video, Bristol Bay Sockeye Salmon, about 8,000 small boat fishermen in Bristol Bay, Alaska. They sent me the fish and the goober outfit to go with it. How do I look? Bristol Bay is home to the largest and most sustainable wild salmon run on the planet. Over 90% of the wild salmon caught in the U.S. comes from Alaska, and 75% of the wild sockeye caught in Alaska comes from Bristol Bay. It is delicious and super good for you. Remember, wild salmon has that high omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, and it's naturally full of astaxanthin, which has its own potential health benefits. You can learn more and find Bristol Bay sockeye salmon near you at the links in the description. And seriously, if you're scared of cooking fish, give salmon a try. You almost can't screw it up.